Welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from acornelectron.co.uk They call this game Condition Red, but I've rechristened it Condition Dead as it's much more fitting. It's a platform game with many of the familiar blocks like conveyor belts, disappearing floors, lifts and patrolling nasties moving in set patterns. You have control of a little spaceman and need to collect 5 plutonium crystals on each screen. The instructions say your biggest problem is the limited air supply. Clearly they were written either by the programmer or by someone who had never played the game. Your biggest problem is that no matter what level you start on, and there is a password facility to allow you to see all of them, you'll be dead within 10 seconds. Whether that's from hurtling off a platform to your death, falling through an invisible platform to your death, or having no alternative but to jump into a roaming creature instituting death. You may never get the opportunity to be killed off so many times in an Electron game anywhere else. Or to leave a game thinking, I'll never go anywhere near that again. Return of R2 is the type of game where you take one look at it and you think, Oh, yuck. It's a mock 3D perspective trek around a completely empty space station, looking for three boxes of Z42 compound. You don't walk, you plot with a repetitive duh, 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 which is enough to send you around the bend within about 10 seconds, and the colours that washed out and unappealing. In many of the rooms you'll find tiles impeding your progress, or suddenly flying toward you as if you hit an invisible tripwire. The only skill involved in the game is in lining up your spaceman dude with the gap you want him to pass through. In some rooms you'll see a sort of black blob on the wall. This indicates a switch, and pressing it will reveal the Z42 compound that you're searching for. Alas, even though I've collected all three bits of it, I then have to take it to the control room, and finding that is easier said than done. You might think that Return of R2 was only a type-in, but no, this was actually available on the high street back in the day. I pity the poor sops that brought this home. Joe Blake deserves more recognition than it's currently got. You're Joe, a Rambo-like secret agent, and you've been sent to the 45 headquarters of Crack's Bloodfinger. This game is a graphic adventure with all of the elements you might expect. Running, jumping, shooting, and going in and out of doors. You run around avoiding or shooting the guards and looking for six hostages to rescue and six bombs to defuse. Collecting a hostage, all of whom look far too relaxed for my liking, gives a whizzing noise. Collecting a bomb gives you an association puzzle to put the letters A, B, C, D and E into alphabetical order. It looks easy, but against the clock it can prove a bit stressful. The game mechanics are unique. You have a gun, and so do the guards, but for some reason they don't shoot back. You can blast them and they'll disappear, but you don't have a lot of ammo so you need to use it sparingly. The other alternative is to jump them, but it's impossible to time a jump so you don't collide with them and lose some energy. You'll find keys to open doors and sandwiches to replenish your energy. Joe Blade is fun, and really all of the screens within it mean it's a pretty amazing Electron game. I've got a message for Tim Wilkinson, the author of The Hacker. Tim, no platform game needs to be this hard. Yes, although you might not expect it, the hacker is a platform game, and the inlay states it has 12 screens. That's a lie, it only has 11. Screens B and K are identical. You play a little character called Hank, who is lost in a world of floppy disks, roaming microprocessors, bouncing alarm clocks, and conveyor belts. I'll start with the good points. I like the fact there are different sprites on each level, and that each level is themed as part of an old-school telephone hacking. I also like the sounds in the game. However, if you sit down and attempt to play it, you'll quickly realise it's quite unfriendly. Hank doesn't jump the way you would expect. If you don't take a running jump, you find yourself just leaping up and down on the spot even when pressing a direction key. And jumping itself is also fraught with unnecessary problems. Why does Hank jump and then go one character space forward, for example? and mode 2 makes it all so slow. So the hack is not really remotely playable. I won't waste any more time with it. Sir Nathaniel's Saving Game is a public domain game. In today's world of zero interest and grasping fat cat bankers, the fact children in the early 80s were rewarded for saving their pennies seems quite alien, but they were, and this game records such for posterity. It's a computerised card game where you are dealt, at random, either money cards or a present card. You save up your money, and when you reach a multiple of 25, you receive another NatWest Bank piggy. 
If you get a present card, you spend everything you've saved on that present and have to start saving again. It echoes the NatWest Piggy account. There's absolutely no skill involved in this game at all. You play against three completely fictitious players, but whether you win, or one of them does, is completely up to how the cards have been shuffled. This means the game is more of a demo, although it does get rather exciting if all players are even and just waiting for that final £100 piggy card. Alright, you might be thinking it looks very poor, but I'm not really going to be too hard on it because it was one of the first games I wrote myself. Alright!